This year was just incredible. I ditched Windows for good, we've seen some mad usability improvements to Wayland, even though it is still very limited, but more on this later, and Linux Gaming has climbed to an all high thanks to Valve Steam Deck. And also, all I really want to say is, thank you. Thank you so much for your support. All of these videos just wouldn't be possible without you. When I started off with my Linux journey, I did expect some speed bumps, mainly given that I didn't have much experience with Linux as a desktop, because previously I mainly used it on servers, without any desktop environment at all. Well, of course, I started off with my all-time favorite Debian testing or Debian 12 bookworm. I quickly switched to Fedora, since its official releases, in contrast to the mixed ones in Debian, made it the more solidified desktop option for myself. And since then, I sticked with it. Fedora is just awesome. Even though there were some controversies this year, which luckily got resolved. But to be honest, the transition from Windows to Linux was a quite pleasant experience overall. This year, and of course, mainly thanks to the Steam Deck, we finally saw a boost in Wayland functionalities, which not only improved gaming, but the desktop experience as a whole. I mean, how long was allowing tearing promised? Years at this point. And yes, tearing is necessary to produce nice latencies. VSync, the most terrible one, FreeSync, G-Sync and even Intel's Adaptive Sync do add a bit of latency just due to how they work. Would a typical gamer notice this input lag? Let's be honest, no, not at all. Besides VSync, all of the Adaptive Sync methods have very little input lag, which is beneath the human perception most of the time. But in a game like CS, especially on a higher level, a few milliseconds reaction time could be beneficial. Some people are still complaining that the implementation of tearing into Wayland is bad. Why? Linux is about choice. And why should we not be allowed to choose? If you don't want tearing, then just leave Adaptive Sync enabled, like you always have. I really like that Valve somehow worked around these Wayland limitations simply by just putting out a device that is closer to a console than to a desktop. By that I of course mean its control or navigation. Input lag due to forced vSync or adaptive sync, and yes, this is not an Nvidia issue my friend. Playing on a controller is better for the perceived input lag. Our hands are very sensitive tools. If you are moving it around a lot, like you would with a mouse, then input lag is easier to detect. When playing on a controller, it's less of an issue, and because the actual lag is so little, the consoles even use vSync by default anyway. Gaming on Wayland is therefore not really any different from playing a game on an Xbox. Well played Valve. But I still wonder where we are heading from here. I personally never expected the Steam Deck to pop off like a Nintendo Switch, but it still kinda leaves a bad feeling behind. I mean, the deck is successful, don't get me wrong. But I just don't think that the Steam Deck could sell as many units as the Switch. Mainly the reason being that it is targeted at PC players. On the Nintendo Switch you needed to buy new games since none transitioned over from the Wii U. On the Steam Decks the main buyers are people who already have a game library and therefore already own a device which they could use to play a game. And it's actually one of the reasons why I didn't get one yet. I can play my PC games in 1440p and 144Hz, and for the go, I do have my Nintendo Switch. And while I don't have access to my Steam library there, I still have a lot of games. Making a handheld cross-compatible like the Steam Deck is always a challenge, because essentially you're producing a device that does the same things like something you already have. But nonetheless, it sells pretty well. It actually increased the general Linux gamer percentages by quite a lot. I'm really curious how Valve is going to proceed from now. They still want to keep using Linux, but I wonder on how they want to improve game compatibility, because they are kind of caught in the in-between. On the one hand, they cannot force developers and publishers to comply to Steam Deck compatibility because other stores do exist and are nowadays widely accepted. At the same time, if they don't change anything, then games like Destiny 2 will stay unplayable unless the developer decides to make it Linux compatible. And to be honest, some opinions about Linux are actually true. It is just easier to exploit a game on Linux. But that does not automatically mean that we will see an increase in cheaters. And since everything's more open, it's also easier to counter some cheats. There is a reason why Linux is often considered more secure than Windows. Let's just see where the future leads us with the deck.
Another thing I discovered this year was that I actually prefer GNOME's UI over Windows, KDE and Cinnamon. And by that I mean its default and suggested workflow. Even though I don't utilize it to its full extent. There's just something about its usability that just comes to me naturally. I really like the no taskbar approach while also maintaining a mouse only navigation. And while talking usability, this week I reinstalled Windows on a separate SSD so that I can use it for benchmarks or whatever else. And interestingly, the first thing that struck me was the lack in colors. This is due to Windows not installing the monitor's color profiles by default. On Fedora, the colors were more accurate right out of the box. Because if it can find a fitting color profile, it automatically gets applied. However, what I still miss on Linux is a GUI for the graphic card configuration. I mean, I don't really expect someone to make a GUI for Mesa, because, well, it's Mesa. But I mean, hey, AMD could contribute something like that. Compared to Nvidia, AMD's settings panel doesn't really have much to optimize, but the toggles for FreeSync or setting custom resolutions and scaling options is a huge chunk of customization. And this is way harder to do on Linux. Without looking it up on the internet, I have no idea how to check if FreeSync is running on my Fedora system. AMD, please provide a UI. It would also be beneficial for the Steam Deck. Oh, and while speaking of applications, Logitech, how about an official version of G-Hub for Linux? Especially Logitech hardware is a bit notorious when it comes to Linux compatibility. For example, while I can see the battery load of my G Pro Wireless, my G303 does not show its battery percentage, unless I install Solar. I also cannot configure it with Piper, so what's the deal with that? Atomized vendors often have really good Linux compatibility, but of course, Logitech doesn't. Next year should be interesting when it comes to hardware compatibility. I want to buy a new audio interface which is Linux compatible, even though I don't think there is one which supports software audio routing by itself. So we'll see how that works out. Let's just see where the road takes us. All I can say for now is that I will continue to use Linux as my daily driver and if nothing really, 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 really bad happens, then I won't change it anytime soon. Alright, so I think that this was one of the last more boring videos on this channel. Next up is probably the room tour for the new studio, which you definitely don't want to miss. If you are curious on what other video topics are already planned for the next year, then you can check out my roadmap right from the channel page. And yeah, otherwise that was 2022. And all I can say now is that I wish you a happy new year. See ya!